Welcome back everyone to Learning Bitish. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 1776, okay? It says that 20 kilogram roll of paper has a radius of duration Q sub A equal to 120 millimeters about an axis passing through point A. It is pin supported at both ends by two brackets A, B. The roll rests on the floor for which the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu sub K equals to 0.2. If horizontal force F equal to 60 newtons is applied to the end of the paper, determine the initial angular acceleration of the roll as the paper unrolls. All right. So what do we have in here? Well, we have our paper over here that it's 20 kilograms and we're basically forcing it by 60 newtons in here. Right. Now, what this is going to happen is that, well, my paper is will want to rotate about this axis, right? My axis A. And we're trying to find the angular acceleration. So the first thing I always do in all my problems is just write out our givens. So the first thing they give me is that the mass of this paper, roll of paper is equal to 20 kilograms. So we got 20 kilograms. They're giving us the radius of duration case of A, which is equal to 120 millimeters. And I'm going to convert this into 0.12 meters. Okay just so I like to have all in the standard units, in this case meters. Then they're giving us that the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction mu of k is equal to 0 0.2 and the force f is equal to 60 newtons. All right, so after our givens, what I like to do always is let's do a free body diagram because this is always going to help us when we're going to formulate our summatory of moments, forces, and all of this stuff. So what do we have? Well, we have our paper just like this. So let's draw our paper more or less like this. And then we're going to have, we're going to start doing the forces. The one that I always like doing first is the force F just because it's there. So we got F, which is equal to 60 Newtons. What other forces do we have? Well, we have the force of the tension. So, right, so we get the tension from A to B. We have the weight as well. So all starting from my point A in here, I will do it in black. So we have the weight. And let's remember that this is my point A. We also have the normal force that the floor is exerting to my, uh, roll of paper so we're gonna call it normal at c because they're telling us that that's point c and last well if when we pull this in this direction my roll of paper will want to rotate in this clockwise direction that means that when it's in contact in here the direction of that force will be in here right so the frictional force is opposite against that so we will have the final force we will have in here is my frictional force so I like to call it FF and these frictional force should be equal to mu of K multiplied by my normal C okay now we know what mu of K is which is 0 0.2 so I'm gonna go ahead and state it in my givens okay now we're asked to find the initial angular acceleration and the first equation that comes to mind in this chapter is well if we do a zomatory of no forces I'm sorry of moments about an axis that you, um, where we are rotating that in this case a is going to be equal to the moment of inertia at a multiplied by the angular acceleration and the reason why I bring up obviously this equation is because we're trying to find this angular acceleration so Let's go ahead and try to do a summatory of moments around my point A. We're going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive. I always like doing that. It's just more intuitive for me. And this should be equal to my, uh, again, as I stated above, my moment of inertia times my acceleration. So what forces do bring a moment about my point A? So the good thing about point A is that, well, my weight passes through it. My normal force passes through my point A, right? The same line of action. 
Similarly, my tension AD in here passes through my point A, so I don't care about my tension, I don't care about my weight, and I don't care about my normal force. What I do care is this force F and my frictional force. So we're gonna start with my 60, multiply by the distance. Well, the distance is given here, 300 millimeters. I'm gonna convert them into meters. So 0 0.3 meters. And in this case, it's going clockwise. So I'm gonna put a negative. And then opposite, we have the friction, which we will do counterclockwise. So I'm gonna have plus my frictional force, 0 0.2 NC multiplied by the distance, which is the same distance, 0 0.3. And all of this has to be equal to my moment of inertia times my acceleration. Well, what's my moment of inertia? So let's remember that my moment of inertia can be calculated by mass multiplied by the radius of duration, in this case, Q of K, is square, okay? So if we do this, so we're going to have the mass, which is 20 kilograms, multiplied by 0 0.12 squared. And let's plug this into our calculator. So we got 20 times 0 0.12 squared. That gives me a total of 0 0.288. All right. The units should be kilogram times meter squared. Okay. So now that we got our value, we got 0 0.288 and we multiply it by our acceleration. What we can see here is, well, we have one single equation, but we have two unknowns. We have NC, normal at C, and my angular acceleration. We wanna solve for this one, so we need to get another equation at least to find this normal at C. So let's go ahead and try to do our summatory of forces in the X direction. I'm gonna zoom that going towards the right is positive in this case. And what do we have? Well, I have positive, um, sorry, before we even do that. Well, what is this equal to? Well, due to this link, right? Or in here, better to show, we're not gonna be able to move neither left or right, right? So all of this is gonna be equal to zero. Just so we are aware of that. And let's just start. Well, we have our force F and our frictional force both going positive, so we got 60, plus my frictional force, 0 0.2 NC. And then we have nothing in the way, nothing in the normal force, but we have some component of TAB. Now, what is that component? What I want you to pay attention is that we have a triangle in here, and this can be considered a three, four, five triangle. That means that we can do a ratio, and we're gonna have minus the X component, well, the X component is the 400, so the four. So we have four out of five of the tension AB that's going negative in the X direction. And all of this should be equal to zero. Okay, so we found another equation with my term NC. However, we found an other um, variable in here that we haven't solved. So we have one, two, and three equations with only two unknowns. So we have to do another equation. We're gonna do summatory of forces in the y direction. We're gonna assume that going up is positive. And similarly the, to the x direction, this has to be equal to zero because we're not moving. So what do we have? Let's just start with negative my weight. Well, my weight is my 9.81, which is gravity, times my mass, which is 20 kilograms. And all of this is negative because we're going down, plus NC, my normal force at C, minus my component of my tension. So minus three-fifths of tension AB. And all of this should be equal to zero. So now we can see we have the same two unknowns in these two equations. So what I'm going to do is use these two equations by themselves to solve for these two unknowns, and then later on plug it into my first equation, okay? So in order to do that, I like to use my uh, solving it by matrix. If you like doing it by substitution or any of the other methods, go ahead. But uh, I'm gonna start, uh, keep myself with solving it with matrices. So I'm going to 
place them in order having my first unknown my second unknown and then finally just the numbers which in this case would be negative 60 Oops. let's do it in blue just so we know we're talking about the same equation similarly in here we got 1 and C minus 3 fifths of my tension AB has to be equal to positive 9.81 times 20 and that gives me 196.2 okay so I'm gonna plug this into the calculator and do it in by matrix and when I do that I get that my results for these two variables for unknowns and C is equal to 283.8 newtons and my tension AB is equal to 145.9 newtons and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to utilize this NC and I'm going to plug it into my initial equation so what I'm going to do is solve for I'm going to do it in here so I'm going to solve for my angular acceleration being negative 60 times 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 multiplied by NC which we found to be 283.8 multiplied by 0 0.3 and all of this has to be divided by 0 0.288 so just so you guys know, I'm using this equation and the only thing I'm doing is basically solving for my angular acceleration in here, okay? So now that I solve for it, when we plug it into all this into my calculator, we get a total of negative 3.375 and the units is radians per second square, okay? Now, why did we get a negative value? Well, we got a negative value because I'm assuming when I'm doing this equation, I'm assuming that I'm going counterclockwise. But in this case, it obviously makes sense that my acceleration is going cl clockwise, right? Just like we assume when we're pulling from here. Therefore, we can either leave it like that or write it down as 3.375 radians per second squared in the clockwise direction okay or if you want to put clockwise and just like that we found the solution for our problem so i hope you guys like this video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one